All right, welcome everybody. This is Mrs. Levin, and this is Chapter One of Honors Chemistry. This is called Matter and Change. And before we do anything else, let's define what chemistry is, because that's what we're going to be doing all year long. So chemistry is the study of the composition, the structure, and properties of matter and the processes that these matter undergo. And that also means that we're looking at the energy changes that match all of those different processes. So the name of this chapter is Matter and Change. So basically, the introduction to chemistry. All right, chemistry is a physical science, which means that it can be observable in the world. That means that we're gonna be looking at our world, all right? We're going to look at what kind of stuff is um, in our everyday life, what makes up the glow sticks that we see, or the fireworks, or I hope we never, ever, ever see in real life a nuclear attack. Um, what happens when we drink Gatorade? What happens when we heat something up or cool something down or... YOLO, mix it with something else? Why does this behavior occur? That's what we're going to be studying in chemistry. All right, I fell in love in chemistry with chemistry when I was in 10th grade also, and that's what I kind of model my teaching after is because my teacher was able to connect everything that we do and see in chemistry to the world around us. And that was my thesis when I was going to Arcadia, okay? What is all around us? How are all of these atoms, molecules, everything going to be connected to our everyday world? Our water, our earth, okay, the air that we breathe, which is oxygen, nitrogen, all that stuff. I'm sure that a lot of you can already see it in your everyday life. But that's what we're going to spend most of this course doing. All right, so if you think of chemists tree as a tree <laughs> all trees have branches yes they do and there are five major components to this chemistry course that we're going to look at all right so we're going to look at organic chemistry inorganic analytical physical and biochemistry all right those are the main parts that we can kind of break things up into just like branches of a tree there are twigs and all these other analogous offshoots that come from it um, sometimes they overlap sometimes they aren't as concrete as it's only this and not that um, you can also get further into uh, acid-base chemistry or redox, um, which is reduction oxidation chemistry, which if we have time at the end of the year, we'll get into with those as well. But chemistry really is this look and this ordering of the universe around us. All right. And these words, organic, inorganic, to analyze physical and everybody's favorite bio like biology you should already have a good idea of what they focus on okay so let's take a look so first and not to be uh you know favoritist or anything but my favorite is going to be organic chemistry okay organic chemistry is the study of all substances that contain carbon yes magical c as in carbon number six on the periodic table that means any and all things that are living and once were living are all going to be studied in organic chemistry okay petroleum products which are going to be your oil-based products also going to be uh, plastics and things like that they're all going to be concerned with organic chemistry and in that study so if we put the prefix in in front of organic chemistry that means not carbon so inorganic chemistry are the things that do not contain carbon non-living things rocks metals jewels anything that you would do for mining if you're looking for more copper so that you can make your conductors for all of your electrical circuits um, trying to find a good iron um, alloy so that you don't get rusting anything like that 
Okay, if you take a look at a diamond ring, okay, the diamond is organic. That is carbon containing, it's pressed carbon. But the gold that is going to, um, you know, house and case it, um, and whether it's white gold, so it has a little bit of silver in with that. Uh, the rocks that we have, it depends on what kind of rocks you have, but you have like silicon dioxide, which could be a quartz rock or something like that. Those are going to be studied in inorganic chemistry. All right, analytical chemistry is going to be when you look at the teeny tiny trace composition of substances. You're looking for those minute quantities. Okay, how much of, what is the percent um, composition of what we're looking at? You know, how much of that rock that you just dug up is going to contain copper? Is it better to mine in plot A or in plot B? Because which one has the higher percentage of copper in it? Okay, if you are going to take a look at um, forensics or like all those CSI, we're going to do a CSI lab in class as well. Um, you're looking for, you know, how much of a medication or how much of iron is in your blood if you're anemic or, you know, yada, yada, yada. There's a million ways that analytical chemistry can be applied to your everyday life. Physical chemistry, okay, like physics studies the theories and experiments and the behavior of chemicals, not whether they are naughty or nice, okay, but merely how they stretch how they move, how they interact, interact, <laughs> it would help if I could spell, um, how they are going to um, function and how and what they're going to react with, okay? Um, you know, the stretchiness of bathing suits or Under Armour, everybody knows about Under Armour, the dry wicking, not losing flavor to gum, um, Teflon, okay, that was developed by NASA, yeah, like space NASA, that is what they coated the underside of the space shuttle so that they didn't burn up upon re-entry, well, they didn't like burnt eggs either, so they coated a pan with it, and guess what, that's how we have our nonstick pan, you guys know who that is, that is Michael Phelps, and in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, they came, uh, Speedo came out with these awesome um, fast skin, shark skin suits, and they broke all kinds of records. When I coached here at Abington, the next year they had them at States, and they broke a ton of records and said that was an unfair advantage and outlawed the suits the next year. So, yeah, physical chemistry deals with a lot of things, absolutely. All right, biochemistry. If biology is the study of living things and chemistry is the study of matter and change in things, biochemistry marries those two together, the study of chemistry of living things. So that means we're looking at the processes of digestion. How does your Pop-Tart get digested? Is it better to have eggs in the morning? Is it better to have high fat in the morning? how you um, get a little nick when you're shaving and how your blood clots, okay? How you breathe, how you think, how all the stuff in those energy drinks really don't help your connective channels to get your brain to work. Um, how medicines work, you know, these are red blood cells, those are your platelets. So it's not just in us, it's going to be in all living things. All right, I started off, I went to college um, at Penn State, and I started off as a biochem major. I found it so interesting that I could put my two favorite worlds together, bio and chemistry. So what we need to know about biochemistry is these branches often overlap. You cannot study one part without studying the others. And that's what we're going to spend a lot of time this um, year doing. Okay, so stay tuned and let's uh, do some chem. Thanks, people.